Islam, the religion of the Saracens, Europe's most ancient and perpetual foes. With over 1.8 billion adherents, almost a quarter of the world's population is Muslim. 50 of the world's 195 countries have a Muslim majority population. Dozens more, including most Western European nations, have a significant and rapidly growing Muslim minority. Islam means submission or surrender, while Muslim means submitter or one who surrenders. To Muslims, the purpose of existence is to worship Allah, an omnipotent and inconceivably powerful God. Adherence to Islamic law, the Sharia, is strictly required of Muslims, and this law touches on virtually every aspect of life and society, from banking and welfare to women and the environment. The Sunnah, composed of accounts called Hadith, are the teachings and normative example set forth by Muhammad to all Muslims. Muslims are encouraged to emulate Muhammad's actions in their daily lives, and the Sunnah is seen as crucial to guiding the interpretation of the Quran. Muslims consider the Quran, their holiest of scriptures, to be the verbatim, unaltered, and final revelation of Allah. And so there is no revision in Islam's future. There is no reform of its fundamentals. Muslims consider Islam to be perfect. Muslims consider the life of Muhammad to be perfect. And yet Muhammad was a conquering warlord that wiped out entire tribes of people. Muhammad hated Jews and had them butchered and beheaded by the hundreds. Muhammad was a slaver and encouraged the taking of slaves. Muhammad was a rapist, a pedophile, and a polygamist. Muhammad was a supremacist who sought to make the entire world submit to Islam. Fundamentalist Islam is based upon the literalist interpretation of Islamic scriptures. Fundamentalists seek to establish a worldwide caliphate as ordained by Islamic scripture. The first Islamic caliphate conquered and subjugated Antioch, Jerusalem, Zoroastrian Persia, Alexandria, and all of Christian North Africa within 30 years of the death of Muhammad. They expanded their rule over a territorial landmass close to that of the United States by the year 655 Common Era. The following Uyamad Caliphate expanded to nearly the size of Russia and three times the size of the Roman Empire during its height in less than 130 years after Islamic conquests began. Umayyad Muslims besieged Constantinople in 674 but were repelled after four years of brutal warfare. They returned in 717 and were defeated again by a Byzantine-Bulgarian alliance. Umayyad Muslims invaded the Christianized Iberian Peninsula in 711, Common Era, and established the Emirate of Cordoba. They then crossed the Pyrenees into Gaul and marched on Paris, where they were repelled in 721 by a Christian army under Odo the Great, Duke of Aquitaine, at the Battle of Toulouse. The Saracens stayed in Gaul, ravaging for over a decade, until they were crushed by a Christian army under the command of the heroic Charles Martel at the Battle of Tours in 732. Umayyad Muslims invaded southern Italy in 667, conquered the island of Sicily and established an emirate there in 902. Some years earlier, in 846, 
Saracens based out of Sicily attacked Rome and plundered its outskirts with the aim of sacking the city, but could not penetrate the city's walls. Four years later, Saracens attacked the Roman port of Ostia, but were defeated again as their fleet was destroyed by a combined Christian fleet under the command of the Papal States. Rome was under perpetual threat of invasion from the Emirate of Sicily for centuries. The last Saracens were driven out of Italy in 1091, just seven years before Pope Urban II called for the First Crusade. Muslims were not driven out of Spain until 1492, but by then the Byzantine Empire had fallen when Ottomans captured Constantinople in 1453. Having conquered all of Anatolia, Ottoman Muslims then set their eyes on the Christian Balkans. Although the resistance was fierce and heroic, the Balkan nations fell to the relentless Islamic invasion. One by one, the Greek states, Bulgaria, Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Croatia, and Herzegovina were conquered by Islam. To this day, the legacy of Islamic invasions in the Balkans are manifest, as the region contains several Muslim-majority states. After conquering the Balkan Peninsula, the Ottomans sought to expand their influence in the Mediterranean as well as push further into Central Europe. Ottomans besieged and captured the Italian port city of Otranto in 1480, where they cruelly beheaded almost 1,000 of the city's inhabitants. They were driven out the next year. Ottoman Muslims invaded and captured the island's stronghold of Rhodes in 1522 with a force of Janissaries, European Christian slave soldiers that had been kidnapped at a young age and converted to Islam. The Janissaries defeated the Knights of Rhodes and banished the survivors to Malta, thereby securing Ottoman control of the Eastern Mediterranean. An Ottoman fleet under the command of the Saracen pirate dog Dragut was buried in their own blood when they laid siege to Malta in 1565. Malta was defended by the legendary Knights Hospitaller under the command of the glorious Jean Perissot de Valais. On 27 June 1570, 400 ships filled with 100,000 Saracens invaded Cyprus. They besieged the capital, Nicosia, eventually massacring the city's 20,000 inhabitants, sparing only females and young boys who were then sold into slavery. Following the fall of Nicosia, the Saracens were reinforced by an additional 100,000 men. They pillaged the countryside and then attacked Famagusta, the last European stronghold on Cyprus. The 8,500 defenders of Famagusta were commanded by Marco Antonio Bragadin. They bravely defended the city for 11 months, killing 50,000 Saracens before finally surrendering. After the surrender, the Saracen commander Lala Mustafa had Bragadin mutilated and flayed alive. Bragadin's skin was then paraded around the island before being sent back to Constantinople. Only a year later, in October of 1571, the Ottomans suffered one of the most decisive and major defeats in their history at the Battle of Lepanto. In the largest naval battle in Western history since classical antiquity, the fleet of the Christian Holy League completely decimated the Ottoman navy sinking, capturing, or burning 90% of their 222 galleys and killing some 80% of their 50,000 sailors. They first besieged Vienna in 1529, but were unsuccessful. They attacked again in 1683, 
but were absolutely crushed by the Christian coalition army under the supreme command of the heroic Jan III Sobieski, king of mighty Poland. The last Christian majority country to shed the yoke of Saracen rule was Bulgaria in 1878. And so the truth is that Saracens have been trying to conquer and enslave Europe and its indigenous people since the inception of Islam. Conquest, invasion, colonization, oppression, terror, murder, rape, theft, forced conversion, and supremacism. These things are at the heart of Islam as they were prescribed and carried out by Muhammad himself. And yet, modern-day Saracens who advocate for a literalist interpretation of Islam are consistently referred to as radical or extremist. It is rare that fundamentalist Muslims are actually called fundamentalist by the media, by politicians, or by members of the intelligentsia even nationalists and pro-Europeans and our allies consistently make the mistake of using the word radical to describe a Saracen who adheres to a literalist interpretation of Islamic scripture. Those who practice and preach an extreme and literalist interpretation of nearly all other world religions are almost never referred to as radicals, but instead as fundamentalists or ultra-Orthodox. This may seem like trivial semantics, but there is a reason this language is used. It is the deliberate softening tactic used to obfuscate and euphemize the true nature of Islam. As is evidenced by the example of Muhammad and the actions of Islamic caliphates throughout the existence of Islam, those labeled as radicals are actually fundamentalists and are following the literal and true decrees of the Islamic scriptures which remember, according to the Islamic doctrine, are the verbatim, unaltered, and final revelation of Allah. Those that adhere to the Sharia uncompromisingly are acting in accordance with Muhammad's example. Radicalism is actually characterized by a departure from tradition. Radicals are reformists, revisionists, and progressives. A radical is a person who advocates for thorough or complete political or social reform. Radicals and fundamentalists are the direct opposite in the context of Islam, because Islam has gone through scant reform since its inception and is currently experiencing another push towards literalism with the rise of Wahhabism and Salafism. And so the real Islamic radicals are those that seek to reform Islam away from a literalist interpretation. Such clerics and scholars cause outrage and are demonized by the so-called moderate Muslim majority, even receiving death threats and being the target of fatwas, directing their Saracen brethren to kill them if at all possible. To call an Islamic fundamentalist a radical serves to shield and protect the barbaric fundamental principles of the Islamic ideology. It is a way of obfuscating and concealing the true fundamental decree of Islamic scripture. There is no major reform version of Islam. There are only small movements trying to reform Islam and reconcile the Islamic faith with modern values. Most Muslims follow a literalist interpretation. Nearly every Muslim-majority country is an Islamic theocracy which follows the Sharia. If mainstream opinions in the West are ever to perceive Islam as an existential threat, which it is, it is imperative that the majority of Westerners understand this. Muslims who preach hatred, supremacy, and world domination are simply following the decree of their scriptures. Muslims who commit terrorism, honor killings, acid attacks, rape, incest, pedophilia, and spousal abuse are simply following the decree of their scriptures. Muslims who think homosexuals and rape victims should be beheaded or stoned to death are simply following the decree of their scriptures. 
Muslims who think non-Muslim women can be taken as sex slaves, that a woman's testimony is worth only half that of a man's, and that women are the property of men, are simply following the decree of their scriptures. Muslims who think that infidels, and especially the Jews, should be terrorized, massacred, and enslaved, are simply following the decree of their scriptures. They are not radicals. They are fundamentalists. They are following the true and original version of Islam, and it is imperative that their worldview not be characterized as radical any longer. It is simply Islam.